Hello. Okay, so I'm going to clarify that the, the, uh, the um, what did I say, the self is not atomic comment. <clears throat> because, um, to be serious, ask for clarification. And, you know, I'm a little puzzled to be because, um, well, you know, a lot of times you tease me, and I like to answer this question seriously anyway. This isn't teasing me, but well, I know there's an element of wordplay to it, but um, you, you said, could you have this one more time with subtitles? I'm reading from, from it now. Could you... Could I have this one more time from, with subtitles? Um, so, <clears throat> well, I guess I should read the whole comment, actually. And as I do, I'm, I'm seeing more details to it, of course. Oops, sorry. Just realized that I used the pronoun I, which refers to the self, and I have no atomic convention, conventional self. In other words, I'm confused, but I think you said that soul and self are both emergent properties of behaving systems, and that we don't properly have the linguistic acuity to talk about these ideas coherently, so we use misleading terms like soul and self. But I might be clueless because without subtitles, I'm just guessing. Okay, so the part that puzzled me is, of course, I mean, I know To Be Serious knows the term atomic, but then again, To Be Serious... Um, you know you're well you're well aware of a lot of technical terms, and so that sometimes is a difficulty, because I'll use a term in a different sense, or you know I'll know the sense that's standard, but I'm using something slightly different, and I have to explain, or maybe I haven't, or even if I had, it's not always automatically clear. I was thinking, what else could it mean? I mean, I suppose um, you know I do believe there's a, a topic uh, about you know do atoms have self? I wasn't talking about that. Um, you know, I'm talking about the fact that, that the self is, is divisible, you know, something atomic is indivisible, and the self is divisible, it can divide it down into parts, and that was my main point, that we can divide it down into parts, that if you separate two halves of your brain, if you could make them both survive, they'd each have a sense of self, it used to be composed into one, that'd be separate. Furthermore, I think our selves are community of selves, you know, you have your angry self, okay, and so you can break soul, selves down into, into these sub-selves. Um, but before you start looking at, well, what are the fundamental parts then? Which ones should I break it down to? It's somewhat arbitrary. I mean, the idea of your angry self is really just you, your single body as a self, always the self, any behavior with the body, this one self that you've assigned. And, and you're really talking about, you're isolating your behavior uh, when you're in a particular emotional state. You know, which is arbitrary, and then that's my point, is that it's like a program in a computer that is run to do system monitoring. Um, what do you decide? Which, which statistics do you decide to look at to do system monitoring? You know, these are arbitrary decisions. In the case of a human, uh, we can change what we look at to have an idea of self. Um, we can take pride in our clothes and put that in our sense of self, or we can totally be oblivious to our clothes and not put our self or, you know, involve that in our sense of self. And um, similarly, we can associate ourselves with um, external behaviors that we see, like of a sports team that we feel a, a sense of identity with, and three. So... One, there's sub-selves. Two, they're, you know, whether they're selves or sub-selves is all arbitrary. It's not like we're looking into materialism. You know, finding gold, breaking that down into atoms, breaking that down into protons and neutrons and electrons and so on. We're not really taking something that uh, may not be substance in a traditional sense, but is material, and breaking down into its material parts. With self, we're dealing with abstractions and how do we want to characterize a system. What do we want to associate with that system as the responsibility uh, of that system? In other words, the relativistic definition of the word to adhere. You know, the self adheres into this system. And we're trying to, to make a definition such that it more or less seems to adhere when in reality it's, uh, we're projecting and pausing it on that system. We're saying the system has an identity we've identified, call that a self. And then we're associating behaviors with that self. It's a lot of uh, bookkeeping, uh, logical bookkeeping, and placeholders, names that are placeholders for things. So that's what I mean by denying the idea that there's an atomic self. When you use the word I, yes, you're naming an emergent behavior. But I don't really say that we 
don't have the linguistic acuity to talk about these ideas coherently, not in any fundamental sense. I think right now we are definitely in a transition because, for example, I want to talk about these with these issues with more or less all the traditional terms, but different terms emphasized and with the definitions adjusted to fit what I think we know about knowledge itself. And um, so we're in a transitioning, transitioning period, but it's not like there's a fundamental problem talking about it coherently. And I think we can talk about it coherently enough. Um, we use misleading terms like soul and self, but I don't think they have to be misleading. If we understand, for example, that the soul, you know, if we want to talk about soul, that it's some property of the body, some behavior of the body that we are identifying. Even if it's a spiritual life, you know, if there's some spiritual soul-like essence to it in the end, it's going to be material, it's going to be a property of this uh, system of the body, a dynamic system of the body. And the same with whatever we call self. It's going to be a label we're giving to certain categories of behavior and, um, and all the related uh, logical mathematics of that. So, um, so, you know, we can use the word I, and it does mean a pretty concrete thing. You know, you're talking about this element in this cycle between your perceptions and your ability to uh, affect your perceptions. Those are examples of will. You know, when you... Uh, we're receiving the stream of perceptions, that's all we really know. But it appears that we can affect that, that we can go, I was just using an example to uh, Casino McCool, that we can choose to go to the desert and we experience the desert, and we can choose to go to the river and we experience the river. And the fact that we appear to be able to influence um, the conditions that generate perceptions, um, that is, those are our examples of the will, and um, really the strongest, uh, the strongest source of a definition for self. Okay, so I hope that, uh, I hope that clarified it and counts as subtitles. But if not, please, uh, please advise. Cheers. Frogs are quiet tonight.